Yo, 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 what's good, everybody? It's your boy Chuck Diesel, aka The Lone Wolf, checking in once again with another episode of Sake Sundays. Happy to have you. We're happy to be sponsored by Sake High. It's your all-natural, gluten-free sake. You can get it delivered to your front door. Just log on to SakeHigh.com and place your order. And I'm going to pour me some shots. And also today, we want to say thank you to God's favorite jewels and gift. Our guest. Ooh, this is for me? This for you. Oh my gosh, thank you. Oh, some fair yeah, It goes with my outfit. It actually does. <laughs> <laughs> this is my study, and I love it. We actually didn't even know. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. It's yeah. so nice. Clear quartz, and then, uh. Oh, beautiful. I'll get back to you on what the. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, okay. I know that the white is quartz. It's giving good energy, though. Oh, quartz is a good, that's a yeah, really good yeah, one. Yeah. yeah. All that good stuff. But yeah, go ahead and check out God's Favorite Jewels. I'll link them on here. And then today we have. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Nikki T. It's so nice to uh, be on here. Thank you so much for having me. No, no problem. Thank you for coming through. Yeah. Um, tell the people a little bit about yourself, what you do. Yeah, so I am a singer, songwriter, and dancer. Is that me or is that you? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I'm a singer, songwriter, and dancer from San Diego, California. Um, I actually, like, my mom is Swedish and my dad is British, so I come from, like, very European background. Um, I'm the first of the family, like, immigrant-wise to be out here, so. Oh, for real? Yeah. That's yeah. dope. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, like, born and raised here with the family, but, like, first officially. No, yeah. yeah. So I'm a yeah. first generation, too. Oh, really? Halfway. My dad is from Jamaica, so he moved oh, out here gosh. when he was in his life. Young 20s, 23, wow. 24. Oh, yeah. So here we go. Come on. Uh, first, <laughs> first shot of the night will be to that. There we go. Guys, I'm not drinking tonight, but he's drinking for me. The double up on the shots. <laughs> um, that's dope, being a first generation. You feel yeah. me? Oh, do you have brothers and sisters? I do. I have a sister. So she's actually older. She's three years older. All right. Yeah. And she's out here, too? She is in San Diego. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's actually a painter, which is really cool. That's dope. And it's funny because both of our parents are in business, so no one knows like where we got the art, cake. the art, yeah, yeah, from. But it's funny, like I'm a definitely like a creative in singing and songwriting and dancing, and she's a creative yeah. in the like with the hands. It's no, crazy. You know. What kind of paint do you know? She does acrylic. Uh -huh. um, yeah, mostly acrylic. She actually like dabbles in. Um, surfboard art, which is pretty cool. What does that mean? Like, surfboard art is like she Painting paints surfboards? on a surfboard. Yeah, right, cool. Yeah, and uh, she did a few skateboards, which is pretty cool. But very like San Diego, West yeah. Coast, yeah, yeah, inspired. So we're very West Coast girls. No, for sure. Yeah. What's the like switch up like from San Diego to LA? Well, I feel like San Diego is like a very chill, easy vibe beach town. Mm -hmm. And when I moved to LA, I was like, almost like shook about how fast paced it is. Mm. But it was like a good switch up. Like that's what I was looking for. Yeah. Because I felt like I love my city so much and I love San Diego. But um, in regards to like making relationships and connections within the music industry, like LA is for sure where it's at. Um, and I was like, I could even see like how much people are so motivated here to like be in the industry that they'll like you know, work as hard as they need to be or um, work as hard as they must to, like, see results, yeah. which is very inspiring to me. Like, I get inspired from other people's hustle. So that. that's something, like, I super enjoy about L.A. Like, something I love to see is the motivation and hustle everywhere. So, and I like to be around, like, like-minded people. So two questions with that. Mm -hmm. As you say, you like the, like, it was a switch up, but you like the pace of L.A. Mm -hmm. Have you been to, like, any other big cities before moving to L.A.? I had been, not like living wise, yeah. but obviously like New York. Yeah, like, that's the first place I've been. Yeah, <laughs> I think in New York too. Yeah. yeah. And they think like LA is slow. Like they're like yeah. double our speed. And it's see, crazy. I don't know. I guess I could see how and be like, okay. It's like me personally, I love New York. All my family is from the East Coast. Yeah. But I didn't want to live there because of the pace. I just know mm -hmm. me and my pace. And it's yeah. like, I can keep up. But after a while, I'll be annoyed. And yeah. so, like, moving out here, I can definitely agree that it's more fast-paced. But at the same time, it's a little more chill. Yeah. So, I agree. It definitely then, is. 
Second question was, uh, oh, what's the scene like out there in San Diego mm -hmm. for just like creatives and stuff? Yeah, so the scene is, it's actually, it's very tight knit. Like, it's pretty funny. Like, you'll, you know how there's like a bunch of showcases in LA? Like, yeah. you'll kind of like run into people. Yeah. It's like that, but on another level. Like, or like every like... showcase, like, you'll run into all the artists you know. I shouldn't say all, but most. Yeah. Like, you'll always see the same people, same engineers, same artists, producers, like, musicians. Like, it's a very small town, which is, like, so much can be built off of that, which is why I love doing things in San Diego. Because, like, there's a huge community of people that support me, and, like, I think that's pretty incredible, where I don't get that out here. And that's kind of, like, where it's two different worlds, which is pretty cool to come back. Like, LA is my, like, work grind mode. San Diego is more like community, like give back and support and like see what I can do for, for San Diego. So it's a cool, like best of both worlds situation. Oh, for sure. For yeah. sure. And how long have you been in LA? I've been here. Oh my gosh. It's coming up on like five years. It goes quicker than, oh, sure. than you think. Like it's crazy. I moved here 2019 for uh, the LA recording school. All right. Bet. How was yeah. that? It was fun. That was like my favorite school experience. <laughs> what did you major in? Um, I was majoring in uh, music production. All right. Yeah. Do so you produce still? Actually, how funny. I co-produce. Like I'm more, the funny thing is I try to like produce and I'm actually, funny enough, I'm learning drums right now. Okay. So I'm going to, um, I'm taking lessons for drums and then I'm trying to learn the piano. Uh, those are like two instruments I really want to like work harder on. Um, but I feel like, singing and songwriting is more of my strength yeah. so like i'm kind of sticking because you everyone wants to do everything right, of course right. i want to be like yes i produce i engineer and <laughs> like it's just so hard to conquer so many things no trust me so, I hear you. yeah because you can try and do that but i'm like oh like there's just not enough time in the day i'm mean, some yeah. people would disagree some people feel like i do it all yeah i mean yes you're right <laughs> you're, there are yeah people doing their people who there are good yeah too. yeah but at the same time it's like I didn't go to school for producing, mm -hmm. but I was in an internship to work at a studio. Mm -hmm. So they wanted us to be able to produce enough to say you came in with a track out and mm -hmm. it's not really kicking. You yeah. change that or, oh, can you add, you feel me? Yes, little things. But instead of just being like, spice this and sauce this up, they said make beats. And so like, I understood how, but at a certain point I was just like, I've been here for like eight hours. Mm -hmm. I could have wrote at least two songs mm -hmm. at least two songs why am i doing this to myself when i know people who are good at this already <laughs> and in my head i just was like i can do this yeah but i don't have to yeah know what you have to do to get to the next point mm -hmm. and then move on i had this one that reminded me of a cool conversation i had with this one artist i think i was like beating myself up for not being able to like do everything so yeah I, like, oh, I wish i could do this and that and this this was like years ago when I first moved to LA and he was like, you know what, Nikki, like people are put in place on your team for that, for that reason. so that yeah. like your strengths can, you know, skyrocket or skyrocket yeah. and they can take over. Like yeah. you don't have to do everything. And it's like, you give people room to be their best. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you remove yourself. Yeah, exactly. And I have to like realize that. So that it took me a while to realize that. And now I'm like, okay, I'm going to just play on my strengths. Yeah. And like, of course it's fun to learn new things. Like, I think that's great, but, um, yeah, I'm not going to like sit here and be like, I do everything. No, yeah. And I feel like, uh, as an artist, sometimes you have to play different roles mm -hmm. and you get comfortable with calling yourself something that you took the role of, but it's not something you have to hold on to in order to be like it was something you had to learn how to do for yeah, that and now true. you have the knowledge don't claim the title yeah I, the okay. knowledge is what we came for yeah so. knowledge is power yeah so you don't <laughs> you have carry to that be everywhere. Partner yeah to know how to fix the toilet and i'm <laughs> not call me I'm for dead. yours no just because I fixed the toilet doesn't make me a plumber and I'm not coming to fix it at yeah. all. So, like, no, just because I got the problem. knowledge, I'm not taking the time. Yeah. <laughs> Shout to that. Shout to that. that. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, not to oh. Knowledge is power. What's one of the biggest, like, strengths or biggest, best skills? Oh, that was weird. What's one of the skills that you think has had the biggest impact on your overall? 
progression? Um, I would probably say, I'd say like two things. I would say my, it's kind of a weird way to put it, but like, I would say like my leadership slash connection to people, like almost in a way, but like, I really am a, I'm also a businesswoman. So like I carry relationships very deep to my heart. Like relationships are very powerful to me and super important in my life. So I feel like I've been very blessed and grateful to meet really good people out here. And like when we work together, like that gets passed on to another person and passed on again. So like the reason I think I've been so um, successful and I'm not even like where I would want to be, but like to where I am now is because of people, um, you know, just sharing that connection and relationship with me. So I've been super blessed about that and um, grateful to be able to, to just make that connection with people. All right. Yeah. What was the second one? <laughs> the second one I would say is my optimism. <laughs> like I definitely, people are like, why are you so happy? <laughs> Bro, same. I hear you. Yeah. It's like a big thing. And I'm like, I'm just like grateful for like all the experiences and, and what, you know, life gives us and things at us. But like, obviously, because people are like, do you have bad days? And I'm like, of course. Like, yeah, we I, do. I'm a human too. <laughs> do what do you our, mean? Right, right. We have yeah. our bad days. But like, I think um, there's no better way than to like carry yourself with optimism and, and like positivity. Like, I yeah. don't want to sit here and be like, my life sucks. Like, no, <laughs> you know what I mean? And of course, there's, I have to be aware of like mental health. That's a huge thing today. Um, but I would say like, being around optimistic people is such a big change for me. Like, um, just because I think if you can, like have people like-minded around you, like you're going to also just like exceed in, in what you do. That's what I've found. Um, I could be wrong. <laughs> like I think everyone, I could always be person. wrong, but like, <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> like, like if you're a bad person and you hang out with people who think bad like you, it's all bad. <laughs> I just noticed, like, it's really great to be around good people. That's just, like, where no, it's yeah. at, you know? <laughs> no, optimism is definitely, like, a key to anything mm-hmm. in life, whether it's going good or bad. Mm-hmm. And, like, uh, you are saying just having like-minded people around, mm-hmm. even if you're not necessarily like-minded, a positive influence can rub off. Mm-hmm. And it's like, if you walk in a room where everyone's already accepted the status quo with an angry, like, or negative connotation to it, The one person who's doing the opposite is at least sparking the question as to why. Mm -hmm. We got a conversation starting. It's like, look, bro, five people in here are frowning. Why are you smiling? It's like, because I'm happy. Why are you happy? Like, let's talk. Let's talk. Like, why not? Yeah. And even, like, you're saying, like, of course I'm a human and I have my bad days. Mm -hmm. But with being optimistic and being grateful, you remember why you don't have to be upset yeah. or all the things that are still going. Cause like you just said with all of my success. And then you said right after, even though I'm not where I want to be at, it's not a bad thing because yeah. you know, you're on a journey and it's a progression. And as long as I'm progressing, I'm yeah. working towards what I want. Agreed. So what is there to be upset about? Mm-hmm. This is what we're here for. Exactly. So what did go right? Let's count. The it's wins. not, what is it? It's not about the, destination is about the journey it's about the journey yeah, love that quote and, and knowing that you're not going backwards yeah <laughs> and i have to remind my that's a good thing you bring up i remind myself that a lot because sometimes i'm like i you know you don't see the progression sometimes yeah. and you're like what the heck but then you look back like a year or two later and you're like okay i see it but like in your day-to-day sometimes you get so wrapped up in what you're doing yeah. that you don't see that everyday growth no you know one thing that helps me see hmm. instagram Oh my god, that's but a good not idea. even because it's like what's happening. Shout out to Instagram. On my Instagram. Yeah. But if I go and look at stuff and other people's pages, I'm like, we know a hundred of the set. I know a hundred people. Are- it's crazy. Like, like why do we in this yeah. like all right, I guess I have been yeah. at least making rounds. Yeah. I guess I've been doing something <laughs> like it doesn't seem something like it, right. but um and that's just again where the optimism comes in because as long as you know that you're doing it for a reason. You don't even have to really hold on to what the reason is. Yeah. It'll play out the way it's supposed to. Amen. That's so true. I love <laughs> that. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Preach it now. <laughs> it's Sunday. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. <laughs> As you're drinking. <laughs> hey, look. 
It's wine. I know, yeah. It, we're Jesus still... drink wine. <laughs> It's gluten free. It's fine, and it's healthy. That's the craziest. I thing. actually am gluten free. That's why I was really? like, oh, it's hey. yeah. Well, this is perfect. So when I'm not yeah. when I'm fast. not doing dry January, I'll be drinking that. So it's from Kyoto, Japan. You can have a little bit of Japan right here in Kyoto. <laughs> Drink sake high. <laughs> <laughs> but have you had sake before? I have. Yeah. You like it? It's good. It's strong. Yes, I like no. sushi a lot, so I always like, get it with it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And I feel like it's strong, but it's not because like you drink it like it's water. That's true. That's juice. true. But if you drink a whole, even half a bottle, you're like, wait, that there wasn't a lot in my glass. <laughs> it like feels like water. Yeah. What's your favorite type of fruit? Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, I think it's the two we talked about. Either sushi or like I like seafood a lot. So All seafood, right. um, or Mexican food. Oh, Thai food's good too. Like it's just everything. Chinese food. <laughs> I just love food. I'm actually, but don't laugh. I'm like the worst to take out on a date because I'm gluten free, dairy free. But you want to go everywhere. No, that's not. Dairy free. Um, what is it? Uh, I don't eat. I don't drink coffee. No. And uh, what's my other thing? Okay, I think that's mostly it. But yeah, it's pretty like intense. Right now, and I'm not even drinking, so that's even worse for the... <laughs> How long have it been like that? Um, I've been gluten-free and dairy-free for a long time, like many years, because I have like a bunch of stomach issues, but... So I'm used to it now. No, it is. But like when people, at first when people don't know about it, they're like, so what do you eat? I'm like, I still eat everything, but it's just like substituted. No, yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. I read the label. Yeah. That's good. Or I take it out, like I won't have cheese and stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? That kind of uh, thing. Honestly, though, there's so much stuff in uh, everything that we eat. Mm. It's better that way. Yeah, and that's why I actually cook from home a yeah. lot because of that. Because I can, like, know what's in my meal. All right, so talking about cooking, you're in the studio today. Well, oh, yeah, out. yeah, yeah. Um, so today I worked with um, this amazing, like, creative director. His name is Milan. He actually just finished writing a song for T-Pain that came out, which was pretty cool. That's cool. Um, so it was great. We... Uh, we worked on this one R and B song and he he was definitely challenging me with my writing and just the way, like the cadences. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. It's always fun to work with another person because it's like you go off of that energy. And it's also cool to see how other people work because you're always like in your same mindset or flow. So I have it I feel like it's so much more fun when you're working with another songwriter. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so that was cool. like co write the actual Yeah, we co yeah, we co write or we co wrote it and then um, we actually did, I don't usually do a lot of sessions like this, but, um, like we sang on top of each other for the oh, whole wow. song. Yeah. For so real? that was pretty Same time? Yeah. Bad. Yeah. So I was singing like the higher and he was singing the lower, yeah. which was pretty cool. That usually is very uncommon. No, yeah. Yeah. Partially just because it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's like, you hear the other person at the same time you're yeah. trying to hear yourself. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but so luckily yeah. we're both singers. So I was about to say, yeah. comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was yeah. challenging him because he was like, usually not um the like biggest like vocalist so he's yeah. like this is really tough for me but like it was really fun we were challenging each other oh uh, yeah yeah that's dope. yeah that's dope. yeah so that was fun yesterday too i was in the studio all day yesterday uh, it's been a good new year i've been like <laughs> i've been on my creative vibe like i've been yeah, on my year off yeah i really did i was working on like um adele's like one of my biggest inspirations so i did like more of a Adele, like, slow kind of style song. A ballad? Yeah. Is it big? Yeah. I want to hear it. I know. I'll show it to you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I didn't finish yet, but I just, like, recorded the reference at home, but still, it sounds pretty good for, for just the reference. I'm no, excited yeah. to, like, lay it down in the studio, so uh, it'll be fun. Uh, Adele. Shout out, Adele. I still have not gone to see her. She's in Vegas right now. Yeah. Her tickets are so expensive. Oh, like, I sorry. always, I would love to see her. It's, like, my biggest dream. For real? But the tickets were, like... It was like seven or eight hundred. They start at seven. That's Shout out to Dad. Do it. She money. said we rolling in the deep, baby. <laughs> hey, deep pockets, bro. <laughs> deep pockets. Yeah. I'm with it. Yeah. Shout out to Dad. I love her so much. But no, she's fire. Yeah. She's um, fire. Yeah. Um, My inspo. I wish I could say it like that. <laughs> She's like, I feel like everyone wishes they could sing like a dumb. Mm. Like, she's just a, like an icon, you know? No, for sure. Yeah. Gotta love her. Well, who's at your top? I don't say top 
three artists, but like some of your top three inspira- inspiring artists? Um, other than Adele or like what? Other than Adele. Adele. Okay. <laughs> other than Adele, I would say I really like Snow Allegra. Do you All like right. Snow Allegra? Not too much. She's actually Swedish. All right. Which is pretty cool. She's a, like a very R&B uh, um, artist. Um, she's one of my favorites. You should listen. I'll send you some stuff about her. Yeah, she's pretty good. Because I know the name. I just, yeah. you know, I haven't had anything yeah. that came across and no one's ever told oh, me to go I listen love, to her. Uh, I Want You Around. That's like her fa- her most famous one. Right. Um, but she covered Do For Love. Yeah. So good. Oh my gosh, I'll send that one to you. <laughs> um, so I cover her a lot. For real? Yeah. Um, she's one. My other one, I love Alicia Keys. Icon, yeah, another. I like, I love that one. Look, Alicia Keys, Swiss Beats. Man, actually, you know, she has a house in San Diego. Don't tell me that. I know. <laughs> Trying to take a trip. I know. Oh, stop. Uh, Alicia well, Keys. Yeah, shout out to Alicia. In my heart, literally. She's in my city. I'm in love with Alicia yeah. Keys. She's beautiful. I've been in love with Alicia Keys <laughs> since I was about 12 years old. Oh, that was for you, Alicia. Oh, that's for you. For the day we do a split. You did a song with Drake like his freshman year. I think I deserve one. You're next. <laughs> You're the next feature. Same year. I'm waiting. Hey, like, look, waiting if too. I get the plug first, I got yeah. you. Hey, we'll, feel we'll link that up. up. We'll link that up. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, Who's third? I think, let me think on this one. My third one. Oh, there's so many good artists too. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think who I've been mostly listening to lately. Um, someone who's really good that I've been listening to. Should I do a male artist or female? I mean, you're a big. I know you. Who inspires you? Um. Oh. Oh my God! I can't believe I almost missed this one. Ella May. Do you know who that is? So she's a British artist. Ella May. Um. She. I've been tripping. I've been sleeping. I've been down in the what? Um. Bada Buddha. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's yeah. LMA. Right. So she's a British artist, um, and she's also amazing R&B vocalist, super talented. I actually met her, which was really cool, sang yeah. to her one time at her concert. You sang to her? I sang to her. <laughs> I kid you, she's like literally like my biggest, like one of my biggest inspiration, inspirations. So like singing to her, was, I was so nervous. What did you sing to her? I sang her song to her. So like, she, okay, let me explain the setting. So I was at her concert in Irvine. I think it was like House of Blues. And this was actually, I found her before she like got famous. Like popped off, like even huge. So she was doing a tour. I don't know if it was like one of her first, but it was pretty early on because she was like still on SoundCloud. Like that kind of vibe. So um, I know. So like, you know, when you're earlier on in your career, like you do meet and greets and you like interact more with your audience. So she was like, if you stick around and you buy merch, I'll be at the merch table. So I was like, oh my gosh. Like, but it was me and my friend. We were like, we got to stay for the merch. So like, we went to the merch table, got her merch, and she was like signing, you know, each product or whatever you were getting. Um, and we got to like meet her and take a, I took a video of me singing her song to her. Um, I think I did her song, She Don't. That was actually the first song that got me in the recording studio. For real? Yeah. Wow. So she like holds a big... I, well, okay, the song She Don't was about, like, her getting over a guy, mm-hmm. and I was, like, in a horrible breakup, and that was the song I picked, because I was like, wow, like, what better lyrics? Um, so, yeah, she was, like, a big, she actually inspired my music career, that's actually weird to say, crazy to say, actually. Yeah, she was the first one who got me in the studio, because I didn't, I was, like, so new that I didn't know that song, right? Like, what made you know. say that you wanted to go to the studio to record her song? Um, so my family friend, he was an engineer right. and he knew like I could sing mm-hmm. and he was like, why don't we come to the studio? Like, let's just try it. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I've never been to the studio before. Like, I don't know if I'm actually good. Where's the studio? <laughs> uh, San Diego. What was the name of it? Oh, I don't even know the name. Oh. I know. It was like, it was not, it's actually not even around anymore. Right. It was like one of those one room studios. Um, so yeah, it was a studio in near like SDSU, San Diego State University. And um, yeah, I got in there. He was like making me feel really comfortable, which is because I was 17 at the time. Um, so he's like, just like, you know, 
because I didn't know how to prepare a song. So he said, come in with a cover, like, yeah. to make you most comfortable. Uh, how many songs do you think you got away in the drive? Uh, Blocked away. A lot right now, actually. Um, I have, well, over the years, are just, like, for this, this year, this, like, actually. That, like, songs oh, that you have release. under these, like, oh, my gosh. Sell, like, make the cut, and you just haven't have brought it. yourself to drop yet. Oof. Probably, like, um, like, 20 to 25. Yeah. 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 How do you it's pick, like, when you do want to drop, like, yeah. how do you go about choosing which song you're going to put out? I think it's, like, the, my biggest way to pick is to, like, listen back and be like, oh, I want to hear that song again. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I want to hear it again, I'm like, okay, this is, like, to a listener, like, they're going to want to hear it again. Yeah. But if I'm, like, kind of bored by it, because, like, you know, that happens. Like, you make music, no, and you're like, this, this just isn't it. No. <laughs> Sometimes, though, it's just you're bored. And sometimes it's, it's yeah. not it. Yeah. yeah. But I also like to get other people's feedback, too, because I'm like, you know, sometimes you get used to your own right. art. That like you're like, okay, let me just, like, get some feedback. Like, am I crazy? Or does this does this sound good? Does yeah. this sound bad? Like, um, so it's, also, it's nice to get, like, constructive criticism in that aspect. But yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's kind of how I map it out. Because I feel like sometimes it's like, I don't know. For me, I just be like, oh, I want to do this one. I want to do this one. No, you just like one. randomly pick. No, I, just, I don't know which one I want to oh. do first. It's like, dang it. Uh, it's hard to choose. I like them. Yeah. Uh, or it's like sometimes, like you said, you're like, this is done. And then you listen back and you're like, man, do I? Yeah. Um, but most of the time now, if I call something done, I don't even give myself the allowance to go back on it. Oh, that's Unless smart. I hear a problem. If I hear something where I'm like, mm, that's bad. I will. Okay. But if it's not that, yeah. it's like, bro, if I spent more than two hours working on something, yeah. something in me knew it was good or it needed to be out, mm -hmm. regardless of whether it needs to be put on the same level as that one thing yeah. is out That's true. That's for the true. last week yeah, every yeah. time I get in the car. It's not one of those. Yeah. But something in this was part of the like step into getting to that. Mm -hmm. And That's true. I finished. That's a good way to look at or at least, you feel me? It's like, I don't know if you always record with like a finished song or like what, but I know sometimes I'll have a song written. Sometimes I'll just start writing while I'm recording. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll free, like it depends. It but regardless, depend. if I spend more than an hour or two hours and I have more than just a hook or an intro, if it's more than 30 seconds of something and I took more than an hour to make it, I'm like, there's no way I'm throwing this away. Bro. Yeah. There's something here. Yeah. This is a whole new sound. Like, I actually love writing new experience. sounds. That's so fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. especially if you've never heard yourself do it. Mm -hmm. It's like you gotta impress yourself sometimes. It's true. I think you have to switch it up on yourself too. Yeah. Yeah. I th like they always say, like stay true to your artistry, which I totally think is right. But I also think it's like cool to to like venture out and try new things because, like, why not? And it's especially true. on yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah. just like you said, fun. Mm -hmm. And especially as an artist, we seek other people's approval mm -hmm. for what we're making. And so it's like, sometimes you figure out what you sound good doing or like. That's true. And it's like, all right, cool. People like it. I want to impress me. I don't care I, if I you like it. I keep reading these memes. Have you been seeing those memes where it's like, artists do music for you, not for your listeners? No, yeah. It's so true. For sure. Yeah. I yeah. so agree with that. It was like, you have to, I was saying this on an episode with Willie J, the artist. Uh, yes, you have to be aware of what people like. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean you have to give them what they what they what specifically yeah. like. Okay, cool. You like this? Well, how do you like it this way? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So makes complete sense to me. And it's the artistry yeah. of it. Mm -hmm. It's like pushing the bounds of what was already there is how you're being creative. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, and like I think just being outside of your own box too, like impressing yourself on what you can do is pretty cool. It makes it like it yeah. adds a different aspect to yeah. it. And it makes it a little less, like, nerve-wracking. Yeah. Like, you don't have the pressure of doing this. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is make something that you think is cool. Yeah. But not just cool, but different. Like, yeah. Because cool and impressive is different. Yeah. Because yeah. I want something that was like, I didn't know I could do that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, and I feel like that's more so what I aim for now when I go to record. Mm -hmm. Is like, I know how to write a song like me. Mm -hmm. I want to do something I've never thought that I could do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Take it there. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, let me take it there.
<laughs> the next level. Yeah. Like, we know how to write a song. Yeah. Let's write a different exactly song. Right. Exactly right. Exactly. Or different perspective or different, you know, just thinking outside the box. And just how you were saying you were writing with different cadences. So That's what like, I was thinking about today. Is yeah. I would, I would like also, I've never, the whole song, like it was pretty out the box because the whole song we sang together. Because usually you'll like back and forth, yeah. you know? So that was pretty cool that it was um, a new thing that I've never tried before. And also like we didn't really have... Um, you know, when you're songwriting, you have like your verse, your hook, your, you know, like the same order. Like today, we actually didn't even have an order, which was kind of fun. Like we were just really um, going off of like our own creativity, which was fun. Yeah. Or what all did you get recorded, like s- structure wise? We did. How much? I think we had like two minutes and 30 seconds around. Um, and then we did mostly like an intro. A verse, like a hook-ish, free. I guess. It's, something yeah, to but then like there was no like it just kept going. Like it didn't go back to a hook again. It was like intro verse hook intro like verse. And yes. It was just like new new things. So there was no like. I don't even want to name it intro and verse too because if we were just like let's go to this side and let's go to this like. Well, you said intro. I just think like. Yeah, just like a. Building up. Building up. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So it was fun. It was like. We weren't like we need a we need a bridge and we need a hook here and we need a verse there. Like it was really just like okay, let's go to the next no. like part. One of the things I hate is when I work with I always say hate, but when I work with a producer mm-hmm. and he's trying to like map. Oh, the song, and, and they're like, like, "No, you're not." And there's no words yet. It's like, bro, I haven't even started. That's so true. That's my biggest challenge as an artist. They're like, "Well, how many parts do you want here?" And I'm like, "Well, I don't know yet." Uh, it was like, "Is That's this where so the other is?" But then I'm sure on the other side, they're like, oh, this effing artist. Like, and see, <laughs> but I say, it's like for me, it's like, bro, I get it. And especially if it's the person who produced the beat, mm-hmm. because they build in their they head what they think they want the hook to be or the verse to be or the bridge to be. And I just mean separate when we're not in the room making it together. Mm-hmm. So they're like, oh, here's this. And you're like, oh, let me record on that. And then you're like, all right, bet. And then they're like, hook, bridge, verse. And I'm like, bro, this is this is my verse. I'm I'm coming in with a verse. <laughs> I'm coming in rapping. Um, <sighs> all right, so what is this? Is this gonna be like? Should I cut that? Like the beat switch, didn't it? No, I'm put a bridge. Stop! Like, and they're like, wait, what? Like what? And I'm like, bro, just just, just follow. Let me finish writing. <laughs> hey, let me write this, and then I can tell you what I hear. It's when. so true. But yeah. I'm listening for what. And actually, be. you know, I don't know if this happens to you a lot. I'm sure it does. But I'll like write a whole song and then be like, actually, I like the hook coming in first. No, oh, yeah. have you done that where you yeah. switch no, it entirely? You know, when you get to the end and you're like, I think I'm gonna switch the verse. Yeah. The, I oh oh my god. That's yeah. So and then once you switch the verse, you're like. I need something to connect the two, and then you go back. And now you got a uh, whole like you like bro. And the one of the like the my favorites. I had this song I recorded during COVID, like when it first happened, mm-hmm. first stage of lockdown, mm-hmm. and I called it done. Mm-hmm. And then I was just going through my computer, and I was looking for a different instrumental, and I found that song, mm-hmm. and I was like, "This sounds horrible." <laughs> and then I was like, "Let me keep going," and yeah. then I found the project. And I was like, this was not what I was looking for. Mm-hmm. Started recording it, and then I just started reworking it. By the end of it, I had changed the hook. I added a verse. I added a bridge, and oh, then wow. I brought back another. I was like, bro, I'm so glad that this didn't come out when I said but it was like finished. was done. Oh, it's like wow. I added so many layers. Like, yeah, and I know when I'm trying to make something work because I like it. Right, like it's like no, bro, clearly. You left off because you felt like something wasn't working. Wasn't off, yeah. So don't beat yourself up. Yeah. Don't beat yourself up. So the up. next one. Mm, take the lyrics yeah. and put it on some oh, website. I know. That happens to me a lot, too, where you're, like, stuck and you're like, okay, next one. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like what it is is you just learn to flow. Like, once you can find a flow as a writer is when it feels better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's true. Well, how do you like to write? I usually actually always like to write to a beat. I actually, I give it to the writers that don't write to beats. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. I, I super have to feel the vibe of the whole song. Like, I can't just write off, like, sitting there. It's really tough for me. I usually have to hear it with the song. So, like, I'll actually, I'll have the song be produced already and then write to it. Do you have it produced, like, specific, like, I want a song like this or I want to sound like this? Or do you just, like, trying to shop for different sounds? Um... 
So there's two ways I'd like to to do that. One, either like I found the beat that I like and I'll write on that, like kind of like you said, shopping for it. Um, but the most recent one I've been doing, and I've been working with some really dope people. Um, you, you met Anderson Knight, Anderson Knight's Fire, um, Red. I've been working with him and they like produce on the spot with me. Yeah. So like, I'll be like, I need some drums here. Or I need keys here. And, um, it's been really cool to like be in the studio live producing the beat. Cause then I can go off of like how I want the vibe to feel and the, what the song to be about. Oh, yeah. And like kind of how you said the arrangement. Yeah. Like I can just right. totally... And that's the one thing I love about mm-hmm. that part. It yeah. makes it so much easier. The arrangement. I'm like, okay, one more, like four more bars yeah. here. You know? Yeah. And it's so, it's yeah. so much easier. And even if it's not the whole beat, mm-hmm. I can just be like, all right, let me see what I would want to do. Mm-hmm. We were at like 10 now. That feels about right. Yeah, like, exactly. As opposed to, yeah, after the fact. Because then when you're like, when you're set with a beat, you're like, oh, like I have to do this first with this sound. It's for yes, the most part, yes, you know? Uh, but you can, ch- you can chop it, though. Yeah. yeah. And I think really what it is, is I learned that I can be way more creative. Mm-hmm. So I don't even worry about it until I get into the recording phase mm-hmm. and start hearing how it's breaking Smart. down. Because if I need two bars... What's two bars? Yeah, you're gonna drop like, it. Like, I'm not gonna spend 20 minutes deciding: Do I add a bar? Take a bar away? <laughs> do I break it down here? Like, yeah. What I'm doing, it I'll know too. Mm-hmm. So I, once I get a rough skeleton, yeah, I'm just like, let's go in. Yeah. Sometimes I wrote too much. Yeah, like, that's true too. You have to like chop it down. Yeah. yeah or yeah. I might hear something mm-hmm. while I'm in there, mm-hmm. and I just slow down the that's whole. That's usually delivery. how it goes though. Once you're recording, you hear it. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like the whole group. Because I feel like in your switch. mind. It sounds so much more different in your mind than like when you're actually in the Sometimes studio. Sometimes once you put the headphones on, yeah, you're like, oh, that you just hear something yeah. like, yeah. or you chill out, or you hype up. Like sometimes you get hype and you yeah. go a little bit faster. Yeah. Or sometimes you're like, all right, I don't that know. made sense in my mind. No. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. No. But yeah. It's back to the drawing ways. board. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. It like, or it sounds really fucking good, and you're like, this is what I uh, came here to do. The best thing is when you go in there. And you walk out like that's exactly what I heard in my mm-hmm. head. Yeah, that's the best feeling. That's exactly like you what created I created the, the magic. Yeah, and that's like after that I was like, bro, it's really different. Like working with the producer who like cares about your song. Oh, true. And a producer who's there to just huge record. difference. Huge you know difference. I mean? Yeah, it like really sets your intentions up. You know, if you're working with someone that's on your team, and just having an engineer who like knows how to tell you or coach you oh or that's the you. best like, yeah oh oh that's huge it's like yeah. some people don't know when they first i feel like i know. don't even work with people that don't do that anymore you know what i mean like <laughs> no that's exactly. how you once you found no. your person like once you found your engineer like you stick with it because it's like no you you know i mean obviously you can meet more people of course but I feel like it's really tough, especially as a singer. I was going to say singers. Yeah, for singers, like, we have Feel got to, like, have someone be like, that just, that wasn't it. Or, like, that yeah. was it, you know? And that's one thing that, like, I've learned is, like, singers are particular. About, oh, and it's not even so necessarily, many takes. Like, or not even just the takes, but the person and, like, in the session and, like, being comfortable, like, getting them comfortable mm-hmm. is the first thing that even matters. Yeah. Before you even start trying to record a song, because if they're not comfortable, they're yeah. headed and even in the exactly, song. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's so true. Yep. So it goes. Yeah, we are. <laughs> oh my gosh, we really are. I spoke it, but I actually laugh so much. Uh, we have so many takes, like just with like harmonies, main vocals, ad libs, oh, yeah. like doubles. Like it's just so. Like one time I was in the studio, and the producer or the engineer was like, "How many effing takes are you going to do?" <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is just the beginning, you know? Silly. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I remember, I mean, I can't say I remember, like, it was like a week ago. Was, like, <laughs> I saw this uh, clip of Billie Eilish showing her friend, just mm-hmm. like, how many takes was in? Mm-hmm. Uh, like, probably 20 seconds, not even, mm-hmm. clip of a song. And That's she, crazy. It was, she played at least 10 takes. Yeah. In just a little chunk. Oh my and God. then she was like, how many takes are in this verse? And the engineer said, I want to say like 86 or 106. Wow. Was in the, I was like. Okay, that's pretty, that's pretty intense. That's the last that's, that's the more. That was just yeah, I would say, I would say like, for me, at least 10 tracks, but 86. Well, not tracks. Just, I mean, I guess technically like, it could have been yeah, tracks, yeah. but they were comping the vocals. So like, they were just taking Oh, pieces, all over, me? all over. Yeah. Okay. And just sense. made the vocal as opposed wow. to her doing 
a the bunch of thing. full runs. And yeah, so it was like pieces here and oh, there. Oh, that's intense. But those were takes and then they probably Put did. Put it together. Add libs over yeah. it, you feel me, yeah. with some dubs. Like, yeah, but she was just like, just one lead vocal is over 100 takes. Like, I'm like, dang. That's girl. pretty, that's iconic. That's pretty iconic. But no, I mean, I feel like, oh, probably not so much now. You know what I mean? I don't tell them. Mm, yeah. You could make it sound like four voices. Yeah, that's voice. true. I feel I was, like, <laughs> I, well, I was gonna say, like, compared to someone was telling you about Michael Jackson's like sessions and how mm-hmm. they were just like tracks, like kind of like hundreds. Yeah. And nowadays it's like not the same because no. people just like it's I don't know, the also the obviously technology got better. That's but, really what it is. Yeah. Because like it's easier to take a vocal and make it bigger yeah. and just like manipulate it. Yeah. Before when it was on tape and everything, you, you had more yeah. limitations. Mm-hmm. And so I just remember watching the Tupac movie mm-hmm. and like dude was in there and he was doing like eight takes of the The like, same eight, thing too. Yeah. 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 Over, like you just can't to make really thick. Even like the punch ins were not really a thing. Um, no. You have to do full take. Full set. Mm-hmm. Like your full set, you have to do mm-hmm. full song. Can you imagine? And now we're so lazy. <laughs> like, right. punch, no. punch. No, just the button. The I lead, was punching clip, a lot today. <laughs> we would have to get up and go, gotta load up a tape. <laughs> it's stuck. Let me get this out. This He's been sick. back there for five minutes now. I, uh, I, session, <laughs> session's just wrapped for the night. We, yeah. gotta, we gotta call. Crazy. Oh. So funny to me. So the fact that we literally, we could record right here. Mm-hmm. I used to record in my car. Oh my gosh, no yes. way. Oh. Wow. I was in college. Yeah. Built my own home studio. You know, I had a Scarlett. Mm-hmm. Are you going to just put that in? That, yeah, that's what I have, yeah. I had the MacBook and Recording the that car. was it. Yeah. You know what I mean? The mic was powered by That's really the Scarlett. Beat, though. And yeah. then I had this vocal booth mm-hmm. and I would just put that. With the mic. Yeah. yeah. And it was literally like this. It goes all around and you just sit the mic in it. And so I figured out like what... You know, I wanted it. Sometimes I'll just sit in between the two seats and sit in the middle, lean forward. Sometimes I'll just sit it next to me in the passenger, yeah. <laughs> lean forward, making music on the back. That's so funny. Well, that's what's great about technology these days. Like, you can do it anywhere. Yeah. And that's what's crazy. These engineers have gotten so advanced because, like, they literally drive to you to record. No, yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that was something that I had thought about offering uh, a traveling Smart. studio. You should. Like, it's a lot of work, though. I just don't want to pull up on strangers. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah. I don't know who's in your who's house. Who's your house? Yeah, what the yeah. house is looking like. Yeah. yeah. And that's the Maybe only thing. for clients that you know. And you don't know. Another thing is, like, even for people I was okay with or, like, I've done it before, there's been so many situations where I'm like, stack that on top of that so I can sit this here. It was like, we didn't even have a desk. There was oh, no seat. No, so I was like, like that's, I can come to you, but you got to have space. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Oh, gosh. So, but no, maybe I should think about it. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. maybe. If it's like, you know, you can pick and choose your clients. No, for sure. Yeah, and where. <laughs> and where is important. Send me pictures before. Yeah, literally. Like before, Airbnb yeah. listings. You know? I, Upstairs, downstairs, front door, you know. I can't see where oh, What a minute do you have? Like, we, we need an outlet, bro. Air conditioner. That's bro. true. Bro. Actually, you should. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Hey, you know we've all recorded in closets. Oh, literally, my first, like I said, I built a home studio. It was the a closet. closet. Yep. We had shelves like this. I put, like, treatment here, mm-hmm. um, uh, towels. Yeah. And then I put the sound booth here and the laptop above it. It's and so I put funny. like, I don't know, stuff. I had stuff. Yeah. I had stuff. Yeah. yeah. All the walls, the ceiling, yeah. <laughs> like, and then the blanket. Like, oh, love it. Oh. Actually, but, two of my songs are recorded in the closet that I no. released. I'm going to do it here. Like, I'm going to make the time. And that's just something that we were talking about on another episode is like showing that you want to do it and then finding a way to do it as opposed to saying it and then waiting for it to happen. Yeah. Um, 100% agree. Um, where do you record your favorite song at? Um, I would have to say I recorded my favorite song. I'm, it was called I'm Single um, in this studio. I don't remember the name. Oh, Studio 403. It is in this. Um, it has a bunch of studios in it. It's in K-Town in L.A. Uh, but like Kehlani has her studio there and like a few other um, 
like LA artists have their studios or I don't know if they still do anymore, but in the, at the time I was recording <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. there, he was telling me like, that's their studio. Um, but it was such a vibe. It was so much fun. And like the sound was just so good in there. Like the equipment they had, um, the mic, it was like, I can't even remember. It was, it was a Neumann, I believe, but mm -hmm. it was like one of those where it was either not sold as much anymore, or it was, um, hard to get it was like, cause my, the producer and engineer I went in there was like, Oh my God, you never see these mics. Oh, yeah. I have to check back which one, it, the name of it was, but, um, that was like the best sounding like production for sure. Yeah. Oh. A lot of fun. How long is it talking about now? Um, since I think it was 2020. No, sorry. 2019. 2019. Yeah. Five years ago. Yeah. It was a fun one. Oh, <laughs> check that out. Yeah. Check that out. I'm single. <laughs> She's single, guys. You heard it here. Oh, <laughs> uh, what do you have dropping next? Um, so I have a song. I can't. I don't want to quote the name, but I think it's going to be called The Water. I'm still like debating on the on the song title. Um, but now we're hopefully it's going to be dropping in the be beginning of February. I don't have an exact date yet, but I'm trying to drop it before I have an all female showcase on February 10th. Every 10th. 10th, if you want to come. Yeah, it's an all female showcase. Like everyone in the show is female. Everyone behind the scenes is female. So um, I'm super excited for that. And um, yeah, hopefully I'll be performing the new song there. So hey, it'll be fun. Yeah. Look forward to it. Yeah, I'm excited. Bet, bet. Yeah. Right. Thank you for coming through. <laughs> it's been course. a great episode. It's good to get to learn about you, what you got going on, and how you got started. Actually, shout out to Sake High for sponsoring the show. And again, shout out to God's Favorite Jewels for sponsoring the show as well. Yeah, I'm going to be wearing this. <laughs> you guys have a good one. Namaste. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me also. Oh, I forgot to say that. <laughs> Thank you. Um.